here we have 100 horsepower and we're going to put it into an RC car to build the fastest RC car in the world. So Raz did 196 miles per hour on one of these motors and we're going to use four of them. Tony's got the world record at 208 miles per hour. So we've got the same car and we're going to put these four motors into that car. So no idea what's going to happen. It's either going to be stupidly fast and smash the world record or it's going to be the world's most expensive radio-controlled car crash. Either way, it's going to be absolutely epic. This is the Hobeo VTE2. So the motor is supposed to go there. No chance. And we got to get all four in. With a little bit of modification, we might be able to do it. But we still need to get more stuff into it. Four speed controllers, radio gear, and eight 4S LiPos. Oh my god, guys. All this has to fit into this. So here we've got the speed controllers. I'm gonna be using the Castle XLX2s. Now, I've already had a couple of these catch fire in the past, so hopefully these are gonna be okay. So they're gonna have to go like here, maybe. And the batteries? Uh, nope. That's what 100 horsepower looks like in this tiny little RC car. Um, uh, we're gonna have to give it a little bit of thought. I've got an idea. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Some of the world's fastest real cars are long and skinny. So let me present to you. Long and skinny. Oh, still won't go. So motor there, there. Speed controller, another one. Another motor, another motor. Four speed controllers. Batteries, 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 batteries. Do you know what guys? It's going to fit. And lengthwise, we're looking at probably going to be about a metre long. And Rosso rules, where we're going to run it, hopefully for the first time, they say the maximum length of the car can be half a metre. <laughs> this thing is going to rip. <laughs> or blow up, one of the two. So next up, we need a twin motor mount and another twin motor mount and some custom-made drive shafts and a custom-made chassis. So Scorch Parts, they make a twin motor mount and this beautiful looking carbon fibre chassis. Trouble is, it's too short. Hopefully, they can make me a custom one. Hello. I'm building, hopefully, the world's fastest RC car. Can you help? I need a really long chassis. Yes, thank you. Next up, we need some drive shafts, stock drive shafts. At high RPMs, they can flap about and you lose loads of power. My buddy Raz Schifrin, he makes some carbon fibre ones. So hopefully, he can do me some custom made lengths. Razzy! Can you make me some drive shafts, please? Pretty, please? Yes! Thanks, mate! Bye! <laughs> Guys, this build is gonna work. You watch. Maybe. Oh, it's Christmas every day! Oh my god, look at this! Look at the size of that! What? That is the biggest carbon fibre chassis I've ever seen! Got all these other parts in here, look, splitter, shock towers, other chassis parts. Massive thank you to David at Scorch Parts for custom making me this chassis. Scorch really do make some of the best RC products there are for speed running, for bashing. I'm going to put a link to Scorch Parts down below. Go and check them out, give them a bit of support, because Scorched are supporting potentially the world's fastest RC car on this channel. So I've got the instructions here. Let's get it fitted. I'll tell you what I really like about this Hobeo is if you look at this differential input cup on the front, it comes out perfectly straight. If you look at an armor one, it's at an angle like that, and that puts severe wear on the diff cups and the drive shafts. 
So next up, I'm going to temporarily put some wheels on there just so we can mock everything up. So I think we're going to put two motors here, then two speed controllers there, another two motors here, and another two speed controllers here. Man, we got so much space on this chassis, and we got all this space along here for lipos. Next, we're going to need some motor mounts. So this is a stock one, obviously no good. Scorch parts, they do make a twin motor mount to hold these motors. So if I put one there, another one there, and then a perfect pass drive shaft to go from here, to there another one on the back I haven't got any for now but something like that another motor mount and then i can either run it with two motors going to the rear axles two motors going to the front axles or i could tie it all together and have a long shaft joining it all together so it's like all four four wheel drive four motors so this chassis is made to fit an armor diffuser it just needs a couple of little modifications to make it fit around the carbon fiber Splitter wires, a armor limitless one also fits. I'm gonna go with a stock plastic one for now because when I went to Rossa last year, the carbon fiber one, it was scraping on the floor. Every time I touched it, I was getting splinters. So for now, I'm gonna try plastic. Next, we need a body shell. Now, I could make it look like one of those official speed running cars with all the wheels enclosed and, and no little cab thing on top. However, I want it to still look like an RC car. Maybe we could use a body from an Armour Limitless. And another one. Trouble is, open-wheeled cars have a lot more wind resistance, so not the best for aerodynamics. So here I've got a body from Delta Plastics. This is a Ford FC100. Obviously, it's way too short. But what about if we use two of them? It's going to be a bit of a hack job, but I think we can make it work. Next, we're going to have to completely lose the cab and the front end from the rear one. Ow. Man, this stuff's hard to cut. Jesus. What? Why is it so hard to cut? Jesus, it just won't cut. Man, this is a horrible job. There's no way this is going to be neat and tidy. No way. This is going to be a complete hack job. Hmm. I'm not sure if it's going to join up that well. The body's quite high up on the back here. On this section here, it's quite low. I know it's always going to be a hack job, but this doesn't look like it's going to be that great for aerodynamics. So, I think what I'm going to have to do is cut the whole entire rear end off of this body off and just get some 2mm Lexan and just make a middle section and just use that and that. And I could have probably just made it out of one body, but now I've ruined two. Trusty eBay! Lovely, jubbly. And while we're waiting for that, we might as well see if we can get the servo mount. So I'm going to be using one of these metal geared 56 kilo perfect pass servos. So this is how the motors are going to sit. There looks like to be just about enough room to mount the servo there. We're going to have to shorten this servo link though because that comes out there. I think if we just join those two directly together, the grub screw is going to be perfect. Now, I need to drill the chassis so I can screw this on. However, I want to wait until I get the motor mounts and the drive shafts just to make sure that it's all going to fit. Here we've got some carbon fiber shock towers. Now that we've got this shock tower installed, we can get this armor limitless rear wing and it's all going to bolt up. Oh, postman! Oh, it's Christmas every day. Check this out, guys. More scorched parts. So we got two dual motor mounts. One to go there. Another one to go there. We've got front and rear diff lockers, titanium drive shafts, and this special drill bit kit for drilling carbon fibre. Now, I can't fit these yet because I'm waiting for Raz Schifrin from Perfect Pass to make me some custom-made drive shafts. Then we can fit the motors, put the drive shafts in, make sure it all fits in there perfectly before we draw the chassis. The last thing I want to do is drill holes into the chassis only for it not to line up. Four posts! 
check out all these parts from Perfect Pass. We've got the version 2 Perfect Pass backed wing that goes on the back here. It's really supposed to be for the Armour Limitless, but because we've got the Limitless diffuser on there and wing mount and all that, we should be able to get it to fit. Also, we've got some Limitless body mounts. So a Limitless body mount will fit straight onto the front of the Scorch chassis like this. The rear one, we're going to have to get the mount on there somehow. The idea of this is, it's really wide. So hold on, let me show you. Let me show you. So this here is one of my other world speed record attempting cars. This one here is a Armour Limitless. This one here also got a Scorch chassis, perfect pass servo, Scorch dual motor mount with a couple of these massive Hobbywing Max 4 motors. 12S this side and 12S this side. So these body mounts here are designed to go on the back because when the body's on, downforce can start pushing the body down and rubbing on the wheel. So on this one here, look, a cable tied across a piece of metal, but the perfect pass thing, you just bolt it on and your body's nice and secure. Next up, I've got these perfect pass connectors. Absolutely essential when you're running big horsepower and they're compatible with the QS8. Next up, perfect pass springs. These are super hard, super heavy duty. These are supposed to be for the armor limitless. However, I'm going to hope that I can use them on this car here. On a speed car, you want the rear end to be almost solid. If the wind comes along and pushes down the back and the front can go a little bit higher than the back, it's going to backflip. So you need to back super, super hard. And here we've got a piece of Lexan so we can modify the body. So here are the lines where I've got to fold it. I think I've worked it out right. We will see in a minute. So here we've got the old folder. Ready? Yep, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. All right, here we go. High tech here, watch it shatter. Oh, beautiful. Here we've got Barney the technician showing us how it's all done. Grab it ready. Oh, look at that. Back to the top and see if it works. So now on the front end, that can slide over the top like this so that the wind flows without going inside it. And then on the rear end, that goes inside it and it all fits perfectly. I'm so glad that Barney helped me use his folder. If I had to try and fold that over the bench like we did that sausage, we'd have probably come out like that. So it's all looking pretty good at the moment, but next up, we've got to fit this perfect pass rear wing so I can line up the bodywork and make sure that it all perfectly fits. all these lines in here that are supposed to aid with the aerodynamics and keeping the rear end really locked in. Next up, to get the body to fit properly, I need to trim these pits here out and hopefully that's going to sink it down into the body. Trouble is, this one here says two millimetres, so I bought two millimetre Lexan. But if we measure this body here, we're looking at like 0.77 millimetres. This was hard to cut, so this is going to be impossible. Nope. So next, I think it's best to fit some body mounts. So the front one, that's going to bolt straight onto the chassis. Remember, these are from my Armour Limitless. They're not supposed to be for the whole Bayo. On the rear, uh, there's not really anywhere to bolt it. I think we can make something. So I've got a couple of stock armor mounts here. If we cut this off, that off, and you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> Sorry, Raz. Yes, that is working a treat. Now look, when the wind's pushing down, that's not flexing the body down. It's got loads of support there. Front one's easy. Next, I'm gonna fit the front and the rear body posts, get the front and the rear section of the body fitted, and then we can look at joining the two halves together.
So I'm going to drill some holes, temporarily put some nuts and bolts through the holes, join it all together, make sure it all lines up, trim it, then take it all apart again, spray paint it, and then we can finally put it together with rivets and have it permanent. Next, we can cut the bottom off. So this is just temporary. I'm gonna cut more out of here. Once we get all the weight in there, suspension set, the tires all set, then I'm gonna cut this out after it's do it properly. But you're gonna get an idea of the size of it. Check it out. This one here's a normal size speed car. Check out the extended one. Man, this thing is gonna rip. I mean, it just has to. I mean, how can it not? Comment down below, how fast do you reckon it's gonna go? Let me know in the comments what you think is gonna happen. 100 horsepower in this. I mean, it just, it just has to rip, doesn't it? Postman. Oh, it's Christmas every day. Check this out. I've had the batteries just turned up. So I've got these lipos here from Onyx. So we're going to get four of them down this side and another four of them down this side. Motors, speed controllers. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what 100 horsepower in an RC car looks like. My God, that is heavy. That is heavy, guys. The suspension has fully decked out just with all that weight on there. So these LiPos here are the Onyx sort of Basher series LiPos. They're not quite as powerful as the Speedrun series, but they're a little bit cheaper. So we're going to start off with on these, see how the car goes on these. If we need the extra power, which I don't think we do, there's so much horsepower in there anyway. So I'm going to put a link down below if you want to know more techno babble about these batteries and where you can get them from. Also, we can get the car from and all the other upgrades. So next video, I'm going to fit these heavy duty springs onto it. Once I've got the drive shafts from Perfect Pass, then we can go ahead and mount all the motors, get the scorched parts motor mounts on there, get all the batteries soldered up and take it out for its first little drive. Next video, we're going to fit all these motors, fit the motor mounts, the diff locks, get the body all painted. Raz shift ring from Perfect Pass working on a new design of these carbon fiber drive shafts they're not quite ready yet i think i've still got to wait about four or five weeks something like that then he's going to ship them to me then i can mount all the motors to the motor mount put the shafts in drill the holes in the right place and then let this thing rip if you think this is a cool project give us a thumbs up if you think it sucks and give us a thumbs down but anyway subscribe and smash the bell so you don't miss the future videos of this thing ripping Thank <laughs> you.